Hey there, fellow time traveler through the vast expanse of television history. Do you remember those days when you'd tune in, fixated on your vintage TV set, as the 1966 series Star Trek transported us all to the final frontier? If you do, it's time to dust off those cherished memories and embark on a cosmic journey down memory lane. We all have those moments, those characters, those gripping episodes that etched themselves into our hearts. Maybe you couldn't get enough of Captain Kirk's swagger, Spock's logical brilliance, or the captivating allure of the mysterious Romulan Warbird. Did you ever play make-believe with a cardboard communicator, boldly going where no kid had gone before in your own backyard? Now, here's your chance to share those cherished recollections, to reminisce about the times when you were transported to strange new worlds, meeting strange new civilizations, and occasionally, boldly surviving to tell the tale. So, what's your most unforgettable Star Trek memory? And speaking of memories, did you know that the iconic Vulcan salute was actually inspired by a Jewish blessing? Or that the Klingon language was meticulously constructed by linguist Mark Ockrand? These tidbits and more await you as we delve into the captivating world of Star Trek. Let's embark on this voyage of discovery together. Engage! In the 1966 TV series Star Trek, there's a popular tale about how the US Enterprise's registry number NCC-1701 was derived from a vintage Waco biplane. However, this story is mostly a legend. According to Walter M. Jeffries, the man responsible for designing the iconic starship, the NCC and Starfleet's registry number was a blend of NC, the International Code for United States Commercial Vehicles, and CCCC, the code for Russian vehicles. The 1701 was chosen for clear visuals. 17 represented the 17th Basic Federation ship design, and one indicated that the Enterprise was the first commissioned vessel of this design. Intriguingly, there was a Waco YKS biplane registered as NC-17701 with the FAA. This interesting piece of Star Trek history sheds light on the origins of the US. Enterprise's registry number, dispelling a long-standing myth. It's a reminder that even the most iconic elements of our favorite shows can have surprising, and often straightforward origins. That's the story of how the NCC-1701 came to be, straight from the source, Walter M. Jeffries himself. Unveiling the unheard story behind Star Trek's opening theme in 1966, a groundbreaking TV series known as Star Trek took the world by storm. While many fans might remember its iconic opening theme, few are aware of the hidden story behind it. As it turns out, the series' opening theme had lyrics written by its creator, Gene Roddenberry. These lyrics were never intended to be sung on screen. Instead, Roddenberry wrote them to secure a co-writer credit and claim residual payments for the theme alongside composer Alexander Courage. Roddenberry made this move nearly a year after the show's initial broadcast, exploiting a contract clause that Courage claimed not to have been aware of. Despite Courage's resentment, he never took the matter to court. In response to the controversy, Roddenberry was quoted saying, Hey, I have to get some money somewhere. I'm sure not going to get it out of the profits of Star Trek. This dispute marked the end of their professional collaboration, even though the iconic music has been used in various forms in Star Trek's numerous spin-off projects. The revelation about Roddenberry's secret lyrics and the subsequent dispute with Alexander Courage sheds new light on the behind-the-scenes struggles in the early days of the Star Trek phenomenon. It's a lesser-known aspect of the show's history that fans and enthusiasts might find intriguing. This tidbit adds to the rich tapestry of Star Trek's legacy, showcasing the complexity and sometimes contentious relationships that can exist within the creative process. Despite this dispute, Star Trek went on to become a cultural icon and a beloved series for millions of fans worldwide. In 1966, the TV series Star Trek faced cancellation due to low ratings during its second season. A group of science fiction fans, led by Bio Trimble, organized a letter-writing campaign to NBC, pleading for the show's renewal. The campaign succeeded, leading to a promise of a third season. However, this third season was scheduled on Fridays between 10 and 11 p.m., a time known as the Friday Night Death Slot for low viewership. Coupled with budget cuts that affected the show's quality, this eventually led to its cancellation. Allegations arose that the network deliberately tried to end the show. It wasn't until Star Trek went into syndication that it gained a substantial audience and became a success. 
unveiling the true color of Star Trek uniforms in the realm of classic television. Star Trek has held a special place since its debut in 1966. The iconic series introduced viewers to a futuristic world of space exploration and diplomacy, but some interesting details about the show remain hidden from many fans. One such revelation concerns the color of the shirts worn by Captain Kirk, Mr. Sulu, and Ensign Chekhov. For decades, fans believed these shirts were yellow or gold. However, a surprising twist emerged from recent interviews with cinematographers who worked on the series. They revealed that Star Trek employed two different types of film stock, causing the greens of the uniform shirts to appear yellow or gold in processing. In reality, the shirts were olive green, a hue largely unbeknownst to the public. This curious error became a part of the series' canon and influenced subsequent installments in the Star Trek universe. A misperception around the shirt color also explains why Captain Kirk's alternate uniform shirt, a wraparound tunic with the iconic arrowhead insignia as a belt, was green, not gold as one might assume. This interesting tidbit showcases how sometimes public perception and accidents can become a fundamental part of a beloved series. So, there you have it, Captain Kirk, Mr. Sulu, and Ensign Chekhov didn't wear yellow or gold shirts, they were clad in green. A revelation that challenges long-held beliefs and offers a fresh perspective on the classic show that has captivated audiences for decades. In 1966, the TV series Star Trek embarked on a bold mission into the final frontier, captivating audiences with its futuristic vision. While exploring the vast cosmos, the show encountered its fair share of challenges. One of these challenges was the character of Yeoman Janice Rand, portrayed by Grace Lee Whitney. At the outset, Whitney was slated to be the lead female character, and her presence in the first season was prominent. However, to the disappointment of many fans, the character was let go after the first half of the season. Fortunately, Whitney was asked back for most of the Star Trek movies, reprising her role as Janice. Budget constraints were another hurdle for the show. To cut costs, the creative team turned to the concept of parallel or mirror Earth planets for several episodes. This allowed them to film on location and save money on set and make up expenses. Earth, though visited in past timelines, was not explored in the present time of the US Enterprise crew until Star Trek, the motion picture, which had a more substantial budget. Star Trek made its mark in the world of science fiction. The crews from all Star Trek series were ranked number two in TV Guide's list of the 25 greatest sci-fi legends, showcasing the enduring impact of the original 1966 series. In conclusion, Star Trek faced challenges in its early days, with character changes and budget constraints. Despite these obstacles, it went on to become a beloved and enduring part of science fiction television. As we warp away from the nostalgic voyage through the cosmos that is the 1966 TV series Star Trek, we encourage you to take a moment to reflect on your personal connection to this iconic show. Perhaps it was the philosophical musings of Captain Kirk, the logical wisdom of Spock, or the unwavering optimism of the crew that resonated with you. Maybe it ignited your passion for science, space exploration, or even your own sense of adventure. Star Trek isn't just a show, it's a universe that has sparked countless discussions, debates, and dreams. Whether you're a longtime Trekkie or a newcomer, we invite you to share your favorite memories or thoughts about the series with us. Tell us how Star Trek has influenced your life, shaped your beliefs, or inspired your own journey among the stars. A legacy of Gene Roddenberry's creation is as vast as the galaxy itself, and we want to hear your unique part of it. Thank you for taking this cosmic journey with us and for sharing your thoughts and memories. We look forward to boldly going where no fan has gone before with your words. Live long and prosper, and may the spirit of Star Trek continue to inspire us all. Engage, dear reader, viewer, and thank you for your time and interest in this exploration of Star Trek.